<laughs> okay. All right. So okay. let's talk about the lamp. So let's talk about the lamp, everybody. This lamp here, this is a filigree lamp. It is uh, cast uh, to several different metals. It's, it's just a cast metal that really is, uh, it's been patinaed with some chemicals to make it gold. And it's very difficult to solder if you ever break one of the joints or one of the pins inside. Now these panels, when this lamp came to me, we have some pictures on our on previous um, live streams where I showed you this lamp the day it was brought to us. It had two pieces of glass in it. It was it had fallen on the floor and was discombobulated. So the first thing we needed to do with this lamp is straighten it out and get it where it sat flat on all six corners. And we did that. So once we did that, we took one of the pieces of glass of the two that was available and we made a pattern out of it. So the first thing we did, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing that we did was we made a pattern of the piece of glass using a manila folder. Now I want you to look, if you, if you see this, these patterns are curved on the edges, okay? That's because this piece of glass has to bend. And without, if that was a straight line there, it would not bend to fit inside the joint on the lamp, okay? So once we made our cardboard or our template here for the glass, then we got went over to the bench and we built a form around the glass. So we're still on camera number one, so I can look at you and talk to you, and that's what I, I can put No, it. we're good. That's what okay. I want. I want to talk to you. Okay. So... <laughs> So we took our form, we took our lamp, our panel that was still in check, it was still good, and we made a form around it. And then we take a mold material called Castolite, C-A-S-T-O-L-I-T-E. Now, you can buy that, but you have to buy it in 25 pound things. And Barbara and I are trying to get it to where you can uh, buy it from us and we'll sell it to you in five pound lots. The shipping's a lot less. And 25 pounds of Castellite, you need to be doing things like I do in order to really justify buying that much of it. So, but so what we did is we made a form with the glass. Okay, let me go over to. And then we poured. I'm going to go on that other. All right, we're going to camera number two, everybody. Uh, we made our form. And then we made our mold. Now, when you're doing lamps like this, you don't want to do inside, you don't want to do an inside bend, okay? You're better off to do an outside bend because you need to spray A it or you need, you need to use a glaze on top of this because when you're finished with this glass, that glass needs to be as shiny as this is right here. You see that? That's factory shine. And when you're done slumping this piece of glass for this mold that's going to fit in this lamp. Now, remember, we had to do it four times. Okay, so we did it four times. And each time we had to use a glaze, a spray glaze on top of the panel that would burn off somewhere just after 1,100 degrees. 1,100 degrees is going to be your slumping for your slumping and bending glaze for your fuse master 1100 degrees now because when you slump you only slump it like maybe 1250 1255 so you need to set your timer and your kiln up at 1255 let me see so you can i can set it right here bar Okay. So when you're fusing glass, which means you're taking it above 1300 degrees, we want to make sure. And Sunshine has those. Sunshine right? has these in stock. If you're going to be slumping, you're going to want to use the 1100 degree one. If you're going to be fully fusing above 1300 degrees, which fully fuse about 1370 1375, you're going to want to make sure you use this. 
I use an airbrush to spray them on, but you don't have to use an airbrush. You can brush it on, but you need to make sure before you put it in the kiln, you need to make sure that everything is completely dry and make sure you keep your fingers off of it. Okay. So it's when you have a, a bent panel that's like this, it's kind of a balancing act once you cut once you kind of once you cut the glass because you're going to see the glass is going to want to the glass is going to want to do that okay can we go to camera number two just for a moment yeah. barb yeah there we are thank you so so you know you have this and in order to get it positioned just right on the mold you need to lift it up and stop it on the bottom your piece of glass should fit both directions like that like that and then you're going to want to balance it and there is it, it's going to slump. Now, this piece isn't cut correctly. This is a piece of glass I want to share with you because keep in mind, these lamps were made at the turn of the century. This lamp, I was able to contact Sunshine and send a picture of the glass I needed for this particular restoration. And lo and behold, since Wismac has been in business since 1904, closest we can figure out, this lamp's 1908 and 1910. Guess who had the glass? Wismac matched the existing panels exactly. What else can you ask for? You can. If you can make the mold correctly, and I will say this, if you've got a panel and you don't want to invest in the mold mix and all the time and everything that's going to take you to learn how to make the mold. It's that to take you to drill the holes in it for the air vents and everything. I do take commissions on making panels, but only if you have a panel, I you will make you a mold. You have to have one good panel and I'll make you a mold. You can contact us here and we can discuss the price. Once you send me a picture of the mold, whether it's got a, a single band or a Duncan Fife band, either way, it doesn't matter. I can make the mold and I can uh, surely charge you for it, but it's a project that it may help you increase your bottom line just by hiring Ed and Barb to make your, your mold for you. So. You never know. You may get one in and, and I'll be happy mold to do it. and Ed can do that for you. Um, yeah. So, hey, everybody, I want to thank you for allowing me to share my lamp. You know, the first time Barbara and I repaired a lamp like this was uh, was over 30 years ago. And we've repaired quite a few of them since. Then. So a full video on the repair of this lamp from start to finish is coming up. Now, we won't show you how to make the mold material because that would be a whole other that would be like video, a class. But yeah. it will tell you how to repair the lamp and what pro what the process is. If you're interested in that kind of thing, maybe and, you might want to watch it. Yeah, and you may not be interested in it, but I will tell you this. Anytime that you can learn something new about the materials that you work with, it's always to your advantage. That's this right. could come up in a conversation. And you know what? Because you watch the video you would have some knowledge about it. That is actually true. Right. So, and I mean, think about that. And uh, again, I don't know. I'm have, happy to share it with you. Yeah. If you have friends that are in the antique business or anything like that, you know, you can be a resource to them and learn a little bit about these style lamps because they right. do show up in the antique market. They do. And a lot of times these filigree lamps are what they call slag glass lamps because the panels are bent and they're single and they're, they're uh, kind of free floating. They do make these same filigree with flat panels in them. So you may get the opportunity just to repair that. Take a look at how it's put together on the inside. It's very interesting. Um, Joe has a question. Hey, what Ray. have you, uh, Ray's here. I'm Hi, sorry, Ray. Barb. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe uh, had a question. What have you spent the least amount of time on, but gained the most profit from? My two-year goal was to be good enough to do custom cabinets. Um, Ca 
Custom cabinets Custom can be Custom cabinets profitable. can be very lucrative. Mm -hmm. the, the thing you find out now is, of course, your sheeting is going to be really expensive. And if, you, you, if you're if you using like a veneered plywood for your cabinet doors, or you could be just using a really nice uh, plywood. I think he's talking about the glass. And then lacquering it. But you can, as far as building stained glass windows for your cabinets, I would say... Cabinet doors are probably the, as far as fabrication, the quickest. We have a video on building custom cabinet door uh, door glasses, and you might want to watch it because it's got a lot of really good information about to how to start and to finish those cabinet doors in a profitable way. Right. <laughs> if that's what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, because so. it, and a lot of times it, what you're going to run into now with your cabinet doors is your obscure glasses you're going to find are probably few and far between and they're hard to get a hold of. I mean, it just took me, it took me two weeks to get two sheets of glue chip that are 30 inches by seven and a half feet. It took me two weeks to get them because I had to search for them. So anyway, so look for that clear glass and cabinet doors along with obscure glass mixed is the way to go. But cabinet doors are very simple. And if you figure the square footage price correctly, you can make money on cabinet doors, but if if you use how to figure your work, the booklet, the worksheet and everything that's on our website, if you'll use that, it'll show you how to figure it, how to figure your work. It'll show you how to figure it by the square foot. And that to me, y'all, is the easiest way to charge for your work is by the square foot. Mm -hmm. And I, I like building cabinet doors because, well, the last cabinet door job that went out of here was 14 cabinet doors. Yeah, it's nice to do cabinet doors. And they're not all, you know, they don't all have to be the same size. And I think Ed talks about that. I do talk about that, Barb. And, and keep video. in mind, yeah, because so we did, yeah, we did 14 different cabinet doors. We did seven different sizes. And the only thing that changed was the center of the cabinet door. The center piece of glass changed. All of the borders were identical so that they lined up. Okay. And so you have to keep all those things in mind. And when you're drawing cabinet doors, make sure when you draw the pattern, you put the separation between the two doors in between it on the pattern so that when you connect the dots, they all go together. That's right. Okay. Joey's here. Hi, Joey. Hey, Joey. Uh, Joey has a question. How do you all get your patterns with the right size heart of the lead lines? Magic marker, question mark. He keeps messing up the lead at windows. They keep shrinking uh, as he's building it. Well. If he's not putting the marker for yeah, the line. Yeah. And you know what I use? I use a brand new Sharpie when I blacken in my pattern and I don't push down on it. That line should only be about a sixteenth of an inch or a little bit. And then you want to make sure that uh, that you're cutting either right on that on the inside of that black line or just on the inside of it. And yeah, I know how to cut inside the black line. And <laughs> and everybody does. Those of us that do this for a living and for a hobby and to do shows understand the process. So we'll, what we're going to do Joey, I think you just need to get a different a different marker or the only thing if you're cutting Joey, uh, just chime in on this. If you're using the razor blade pattern uh, tool on your on your copper foil, just go in and add another piece of cardboard between the razor blade. Add another piece and that'll give you your lead line. If you're cutting patterns out like that, if you're working on the lead on the light box, get closer to that black line, my friend, because I, I that may be it. Did I answer that, Joey? If I didn't, let us know. Um, Sandy has a question. She says she's a beginner and as new as they come. She sees examples of on Facebook that show a stained glass objects adhered to the glass in the window. Is this a thing? I'm not sure what that means. Well, it's, it's a thing. What is it's, it? It's, it's just a stained glass object glued to the window, glued to a piece of glass in like a sash, I guess. 
how some people do that. I don't I'm know. They sure. glue stuff to it. And I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not a, the thing about it's, it, you know, they used to do a thing called stained glass overlay and they put it, it looked Rochelle, like a stained glass window. It's glass on glass. Uh, explain that to, can someone explain to me what that is? I don't understand. Glass on glass, G O G. It sounds like they're taking window panes and gluing stained glass on top of the glass. Oh, well, that's what why, it sounds like to me. Why don't they just glue it around? We do mosaics with G O G. Okay, I got you. All right, it's mosaics. Okay, so glass mosaics, on glass, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. yes. Rose and then what do you use for a, um, uh, a grout? A grout. What do you use for a grout? Or do you just leave it open? Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, because it has to be finished. The drawback of that is, is if that piece of glass, if the window pane that you got it glued to breaks, it's broke. There is no fixing it. We have a really good example of that here in our in our store, and I'll take a picture of it and share it with y'all. It's very similar, but um, it's not. It, it doesn't have grout between it. <clears throat> it has uh, resin over it, so it's. Um, oh yeah, our door going into the shop. Yeah. So it's painted. And oh, it I'm sorry, our phone's ringing. They're probably trying to trying to make sure our Google works. <laughs> and I don't know. Why. It'll stop in a second. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, a regular grout or specialized grout that changes color to match the color of the glass. Okay, that okay. sounds nice, That's Michelle. Cool. That's all right, Taylor. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yes, I've seen that before. And it is a thing and it's it's pretty. It's pretty. It and is pretty. And it, and it's good. It's great use of your scrap. I mean, and talk about things that are profitable. Anytime that you can recycle your glass right? Yeah. and other, you know, like old windows and things like that or old frames uh, or old glass, um, that's going to be more profitable. Any, for you. Yeah. That anytime can you can, you revenue. can upcycle anything, I think yeah. is, is probably the, a good way to, to approach it. So, yep. Yeah. Certainly is. Now, have I got all the questions answered? I'm know. just checking. I think thank I everybody do. for tuning in tonight. Yeah, this is awesome, y'all. Uh, thank you to Ray. Ray just joined us and he didn't get to hear that we gave him a big thank you and a big shout out for being such a wonderful moderator. Thank you, Ray. And um, any other questions or we'll move on to. Oh, how long have you guys been married? 36 years. 36 years. Yeah. Yes, 36 years. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. We appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've been in business 36 years and we've been married 36 years. So it's been a whirlwind tour. We've been on the top. We've been on the bottom. and. <laughs> okay, so. Um, That's all good, y'all. I think we might have started our business before we got married. I think that's how it happened. Okay. So we did. It was August of 85. Yeah, that's right. And then we got married the next year. In June of 86. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do, how about if we do a um, demo? Well, you I just, you know demo? what I did is I, I brought this piece of glass because I wanted to share it with everybody that I did this lamp with, I had a little piece left over and, you know, it's always good. It's always good when you have parts left over, especially after all the parts are already made. So that's good. So this is a, this piece of glass here that I'm going to share with y'all tonight is a piece of glass that has been made by Wismac for a very long time. And it is the W. It oh, is the W. Me, 55D. Barbara's going to camera number two. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in again tonight, please. We just really want to thank y'all. So you can see this. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. There, there we, we go. go. W55D. Wow, you can really see that, can't you? And it is a beautiful glass and it looks good. Um, go switch cameras again, Barb, please. I'm sorry. You're all over the place tonight. And there you then, go. And then I just kind of want to let y'all see this. Okay. But the main thing about this glass here, we're going to go back to camera two, please, Barb. The main thing about this glass is that 
it is annealed. So those of you that want to know which end is the hot end, it's this end right here. Because I just finished up on that end, and that's where we are. So we're gonna we're gonna run that back, and now we're gonna we're gonna get behind our run that's right here, pull down and away. Okay. So everybody heard that. Let's let's do that again and we'll we'll flip it around so that we can hear. Turn it around, go to our hot side. Now you heard that, <clears throat> excuse me, that run is stopped right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in behind it with my grousers and pull down and away. And we're going to get that, we're going to get that look. Now this time I'm just going to pull straight and we don't have to turn it around because the hot side's on me. And there we go. So by turning the glass around, the score is fresher up here. It's hotter. I, I don't know that it works any better, but it works better for me. And if it helps you break your glass correctly, then you know what? Then I've done my job. And your success within working with glass makes me happy. Okay. So there you are. A little a little glass cutting demo. Just just do it. Grab your glass cutter, listen to your glass everybody and have fun, please. Have fun. Thank you, Ed. Okay, did we come up with any more questions from you all? Um Yeah, it's it does look better when it's lit in the lamp than regular light. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I could not and, believe when this lamp was lit. And that's lit like a 60 watt bulb in there. Yeah. Um, do you think that uh, Tom Sharp wants to know, do you think that coming off of your glass onto your work surface damages your uh, cutter wheel? Absolutely not because it's the wheel, the wood is soft and my cutter wheel, your car, your cutter wheel is carbide. And it, so it's a very hard, what's going to chip, your cutter wheel is if you drop it on the concrete or if you're cutting on a, uh, you know, on a steel table, but the wood, the wood's plenty. It leaves impressions and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt it. But, Tom, you just have to be real careful though, buddy. Just make sure you don't drop your cutter. The concrete floors are the worst thing in the world. And, you know, if your cutter rolls off your workspace, it's 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 just really annoying because because if you if you hold it in your hand, you're going to see that the end with the ball on it is heavier. But it seems to almost never fall that way. <laughs> Christine said that she does that now that she does with her cutter that you cut on the, you break it on the hot side. And I hope it helps, Christine. Um, I really do. I hope it helps. And then, and your information helping us will help others. Thank you, Christine. Um, so we have some new videos coming out. We have a, uh, a couple of videos and you'll see them coming out every, probably once a week over the next three or four weeks. Uh, we have a soldering video. We have a leaf pattern video. We have uh, a starfish pattern video so and a kite all pattern yeah. video. Yeah, so we've out, got so. four and five videos that we're working on all at once, and then this one. So uh, you'll be seeing some longer videos coming out, but you'll still get those shorts on how to uh, cut. Uh, we have some soldering shorts coming out, so it's fun. We're having a great time and we appreciate all the watches. Right. So we're everything. gonna switch back to camera one and get back oh, into I'm your sorry. screen. For I'm you. sorry. That's okay. That that glass is beautiful no matter how <laughs> we look at it. So it, it's all good. And uh so we want to thank everybody, all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing because we never would have made five thousand, let alone eighty six hundred or eighty four hundred without your help. So thank you again for your subscriptions to the RDRV channel. Um, so the question was, do you do, do you flip the glass around when you're doing straight lines? 
No, because the, the cool side is on me. Right. Okay. See? So you don't have to flip it. So because I do straight lines, I pull my cutter for a straight line. I push my cutter for patterns. So because I'm pulling, I don't have to turn it around. The hot end's already facing me. And there we are. We have a broken piece of glass. Very nice. Um, uh, Dana is asking, I am new and was wondering what you mean by the hot side. And, and we just explained that. So I guess. Yeah. Uh, so you thank you, it. Dana, for tuning in. And thank you for being new. And thank you for the question. Um. Patricia Hike wants to know when you start the run, how do you get the run to not go all the way to the end of the glass? Does the screw on the pliers need to be set? No, absolutely not. What you want to listen to is that is that little pop and you want to hold your pliers. There's a there's like a little curve right here at the very end of them that I put my little finger there and I put the ball of my thumb, the fat of my thumb right there. And you, if you squeeze down, and I have, I have no area in between my pliers. If you squeeze down just a little bit, you don't want to go bonk because it'll run it out, but you want to go just squeeze it, and you'll hear it pop, pop. And once it pops, let me see if I can get it to do this. Yeah, let me get that camera All right. right there. Barbara's going to switch over to camera two, and I'm going to pull a score, and then we're going to try and stop it. We're just going to wait for the pop and then stop. We're going to pop and stop. Here we go. I'm going to see if I can get it just to stop. And it did. It stopped right there. Can you hear it? Let me try and run it from the other end. See if you can hear it. Do you hear it? So I, I just broke on both ends for me now. So I'm going to take my grousers. They can't see your grousers. There you I'm go. taking my grousers. I'm going to put my knuckle and my thumb. Here we go. See, it went, it broke, it went, ran down. And then this other end it was right there. A lot of times what happens, y'all, when you're, you can go back to another camera. Okay. A lot of times, y'all, what happens when you're cutting glass and it breaks off at a certain point, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you'll notice the brakes are going left or right. So what you what you have is you're just putting too much pressure on the pull down of it. Okay. So you just kind of you just just have a little more finesse with it. And that little piece of glass there actually separated when I went to pull it apart. And that's and if you look at this curve right here that broke because I pulled it away like that instead of down. So you just have to be careful with your grousers and your runners. Your runners are excellent pliers for straight lines and your grousers are excellent pliers for using, for using all the rest of your cuts. And if you need to get a separate pair of grousing pliers, to give you two hands. Yeah. If you need, you know, if you need it, if you feel you need it, then that's, you know, that's what you want to do. But y'all should have heard that. You should have heard that run. Oh. And it oh. just went right on through. Sorry. That's okay. We're good. Okay. Okay. Glass cutting, you know, uh, I've been cutting glass for 40, 43 years. And the very first time I saw somebody throw a huge sheet of glass on the table, score it by jumping up on top of it, scoring it, jumping off of it, lifting it up on one end so that it curved like that. I went the other direction. <laughs> but all the guys did was stick a stick under the score let it down, and the gentleman that scored it walked up to it and did this. Bonk. And boom, it ran, and we were on. And from that point on, it was on for Ed because I just fell in love with it. Yeah, you haven't showed us that trick yet, Ed. With the big one? 
Bonk. Big, big pieces of glass. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll get some. Well, in here you, we'll you've try. done some big pieces of glass, but here, not lately. that big. Yeah. And you don't need to do any. I'm no, just, I'm tired. Forget about that. I, that was I, a bad idea. That makes me tired <laughs> thinking about it. I know. Okay. Magali. Hey. Hi, Magali. You're here. Good Guess what? You. Let me let me get this for you. Okay. Uh, do you need the other camera? So we Yeah, let's go to camera you. number two, Magali. We're going to show you the uh, fusing glazes that you'll you were asking about next week. I told you I'd have them here for you. I'm glad you could come tonight. She may have you seen this yet, Magali? But this is what you were looking for. These are what you're looking for. This is the 1100 degree. This is just for slumping panels and for, you know, taking glass up to 1100 degrees or thereabouts to make it tacky. And then this is the 1300 degree overcoat clear glaze. This is for fully fusing. These should help you out, Magali. And they're all by Fuse Master and Sunshine Glassworks, the sponsor tonight of our live stream has these materials in stock. So Magali, I hope that that helps you out and uh, will help you out with your process when you're uh, fusing and tack, tack fusing your pieces of glass together. And uh, for the pendants for that we were doing in the short, that Magali saw, uh -huh. they, they would she would use the one in the bigger bottle, right? Yeah, the, clear. The, the pendants, the jewelry is for 1300 degrees and above. Yeah, because we had to take those pendants, that jewelry up to 1375, 1380. So, um, hers came out shiny, but she didn't use the, the spray A. But it's just for some glass, you need that clear, yeah. Coat. Because hey, let me let me tell you a little secret about. Euroboros and Bullseye and probably Yakagani, those glasses don't divertify. Why? It's 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 in the process. But those three manufacturers, the divertification, divertification, divertification okay. is almost non-existent in those glasses. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the Yakagani. Yes. Um, what are your feelings on gel flux? Um, I only use Ruby flux and, and it is, of course, not a paste or a gel. I, the paste and gel early on, I found out I didn't like the way that they smoke and I don't like the way that they smell. And I definitely don't like that burn on the tip of my tongue. I don't have that problem with Ruby Flux, but keep in mind too, with the Ruby Flux, you're not using hardly any flux at all. With the paste flux and everything, you're using way too much flux. You're using you're using more flux than you need when you're using paste flux or gel flux. It's just more to clean off your project. And it, yeah, and you gotta you gotta deal with that. Uh, you know, they say it smokeless. Well. I still see fumes coming off of them uh, when I'm watching other people working like on, on YouTube and they're using not what I use, but I can still see the fumes come off of it. And to me, that's just, you know, that's, it's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. <laughs> enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> So you can uh, visit Conway Glass to uh, grab a link and send us a question uh, if you'd like to have, or, for us to send you a link if you would like to have your artwork in the viewer showcase. Yeah. Oh, we'd love to have so you send us in a window. So that's coming up the first Monday in October. Um, and just uh, grab a link on our website, conwayglass.com forward slash RDRV. And uh, send us the your information. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll send, send you a, a link, link back so you can get us a photograph. And we had y'all... Remember Maybe. last Wednesday was our, the grand opening of our new stained glass retail shop. We had a great day. Wasn't anything to, you know, breaking down the doors or anything, but we did have some new customers come in that were waiting for us to open the door. So it was nice. And it was nice to see some friends and some more customers that have been waiting for us to open the doors. And thank you all for hanging out and waiting and waiting and waiting. So we've been, really happy <laughs> um 
yeah, I was going to say something else about the viewer showcase, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. If you send something in for the viewer showcase, make sure in the about, you know, what it's about, just put viewer showcase, viewer showcase, and that way I'll know exactly what it's for. So um, right. you if don't you'll wanna, do that, it'll be easier for me to find and uh, I and won't have to of, chase it What in. kind of file do you want it in? Uh, the, yeah, I'll tell them when I send the link. But okay. okay. Yeah, uh, you'll need to send it in a JPEG. Mm -hmm. But first you'll need to send me a message so I can send you the link. Uh, and you'll get that at the website. You can also grab a link to the Amazon storefront on the website. And we've got all kinds of good stuff in there. So Yeah, all your hand tools are there and all of your, we have uh, grinders there, different things uh, that, to help you within your stained glass process. So, um, yeah, the retail store is open now. Uh, the gallery opens October the 1st. We're real excited about that. We're getting ready to put the coils in, in the glass blowing furnace. So we'll be, we'll be up and running and getting our inventory ready for our, our grand opening of our, of our gallery in October. Yeah. I think we're going to do a little wine reception. Um, I don't know how that will go. Yeah. In October on, in that Wednesday. Okay, That's what I'm I was all, planning on. I'm and you'll get a newsletter about that if you guys are close by. Come on down. Uh, Tom said that um, he's going to ride down when he gets his bike ready. Oh, I'd he's love gonna to. He's going to come see us. I'd love to see you. That's great. We'd love to see you. Okay, Magali had questions, but she forgot to write them down. Uh -oh. Okay, Christine <laughs> wants to know. <laughs> maybe you can find them. Um, Christine wants to know, do you still use a fume ventilator when using Ruby flux like you have to with the others? I'm sorry to say I don't. Um, I probably should, but in my, in my stained glass studio, I have uh, two ceiling fans and usually I may turn my iron up just a little bit hotter and turn the fan on behind me so that it blows it. I, I really don't have a lot of fumes soldering with ruby flux i i really don't have a lot with it no we didn't we don't have you can't even smell and it. it used to be when we used a paste flux when you were soldering when you walked back to the studio you smelled that you were soldering you can smell it yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. come on please yeah so try the ruby flux you're not going to need a fan but if you have one christine go ahead and use it because safety is always better than not being safe. I we have really good ventilation in our studio. We have, yeah, we have really good ventilation. Okay. So uh, do we have any more questions? Jennifer said, uh, grand opening sounds good. Sweetened with wine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and October is a good time to drink wine. Of course, any time's a good time to drink some wine. That's right. So uh, I'm looking for more questions. I'm Magali, glad did like you find those lamp. questions you were looking for? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, glad y'all like this lamp because I've really, you know, once you, you have to, you have to get, and I'm sure a lot of you, when you're doing your pieces and building your stained glass or getting ready to do drawings, you have to get in that right frame of mind. And for me to sit down and pull a panel out of this lamp and then make a mold and then, and then make the cardboard template and make it right so that it fits that, you know, but you can't procrastinate once you start, then you need to start it. However, getting to that point is, is a little bit tough because you know that you've got to stick with it and see it through to the end. Because when I called my customer tonight to tell them that their lamp was ready, Guess what I got? I got a, oh boy, thank you so much. It's awesome. I can't wait to come and pick it up. And that, that's really a huge part of my job and Barbara's job too, is just making our customers happy by performing things that no one else can do. And uh, uh, that's us. We had a question about, do we sell the Ruby Flux? Um, you can find the Ruby Flux in our Amazon store. Um, and you can grab that link. Uh, actually, the link is in the description of this live stream. So you'll see a link that goes to the chemicals. And also you can buy it from Sunshine. So um, 
we just made it easy for you guys to. Yeah, we just shop like the Ruby Flux because we've been using it for 25 years. Okay, on Amazon, you would just, like I said, go to the description in our, uh, on this live stream, and you'll see a description that says chemicals. And, you know, there's a bunch of links in the description, and it says chemicals. And uh, just click on that link, and it'll take you right to where the Ruby Flux is. It's right in that batch of things. So you should be able to find it with no problem. We've got all our favorite tools there. We try to keep that up to date and find the best deals. So right. uh, let us know if you need us to find something for you. We go shopping like a couple times a week, go through Amazon, try to find the best deals. Yeah. Because sometimes, keep, you know, things are hard to find. Yeah. And we keep on on our on our website, we also keep uh, the lip and net tools that we are so fond of. We keep them here in the shop for your hand tools. And we also offer free shipping with those tools. So, Yes, that's true. And of course, when you shop on our Amazon store, we make a little tiny profit and we appreciate you it, shopping. It there. is. It's a great way to help support the RDRV Glass Studio channel. And we thank every one of you for everything you do. Yes, we do. Okay. And Magali said that she really found the information that uh, we shared, well, that Ray shared with us about the soldering iron and how to rejuvenate that soldering iron. That really helped her. Right. So if you all are interested in that, um, I can't remember how many live streams uh, ago that three. was. Three. Three or four live streams ago. Um, uh yeah. yeah, it's three or four live streams. Christine wanted to know, do we carry the Toyo cutter Ed uses on Amazon? Yes, it's there. Yes, it is. Yeah. The one that he has looks gold, right? It yeah, was it silver. Looks, it was silver, but it's, it was it's silver. just the finish has come off of it because they're all brass underneath. It well, I mean it was it was a gray color. Yeah, like a grayish silver, but and now it's gold. So they, they do that. They change color after you use them for a long time yeah so and it'll you'll, look and a you'll see that the one on amazon has the 135 degree wheel on it and that's that's the angle that will cut it's really good for cutting eighth inch glass and up to three eighths glass if you that's you right. know if you were to find yourself in that yeah so where you needed it cut so <clears throat> but we do thank you christine too appreciate it yes so we uh, had a lot of great things happen uh, this week. We had a lot of short videos go out and great responses, great comments, and we appreciate all that. And, and we'll get some pictures tomorrow, Barb, uh, from the view from my office in the morning. And if you find this live stream helpful, please, do. <laughs> please give us a thumbs up. And you might even want to subscribe. And um, ring the bell when you subscribe, and <laughs> so you don't miss any of our videos or live streams. Don't we forget. appreciate it. Ring that thank bell, you. everybody. Thank you, guys. And thank you we all for everything it. that you do. Um, Thomas, was it Thomas? Someone wanted to know who was it wanted to know what our dinner was like last week. How was it? What did we do last week? I don't remember. <laughs> What did we do last week? I don't know. Did we? I don't know, but I'm sure it was good because we always make Monday night worth it. Yeah, and our, our my grandson and I are working out of town tomorrow uh, in a church, and so tonight when we go home, we're going to put the roast in the oven so we can take roast beef sandwiches for lunch with us. Yeah, tomorrow. we're going to cook a roast tonight in the oven, and we're getting Chinese. Yeah, we're getting we're Chinese because I need a night off, and so does Barbara, and so does my grandson. We don't want to do dishes tonight. <laughs> we just gave up on dishes tonight. But thank you, everyone, that gives us super chats and super thanks. Yeah, because super that chats, super Sometimes to go and out to dinner thanks. and treat yeah. ourselves, and we really appreciate it. We appreciate everything that you guys do. You might not think that it's all that much that you do, but just showing up here and saying hello to Barbara and I makes our evening, and we really appreciate We look forward to Monday night. And sharing our Monday evenings with you. Thomas also asked for some more brain cells. Me too, Thomas. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I need a few more myself. I've been 
Whoa. adding uh, more vitamins to my morning routine, hoping that helps. Uh, Joey wants to know what kind of paper do you use to duplicate and create old patterns when you need to remake an old stained glass panel? Well, I, I use my same uh, 40 pound bond paper that I use for my patterns. I'll just uh, make my block and then I can uh, work off my light box and trace that old pattern onto the and make a new pattern. And something that'll help you keep your pattern in check and make it last a lot longer is to go ahead and, and take and put that pattern underneath of clear contact paper. And like when we're doing a, a church that has 12 or 16 windows in it, let me tell you, that contact paper pattern will make it through all 12 or 16 windows with no problem at all. So um, We have that paper uh, Joey on uh, the Amazon store. So, uh, and also it's in the description. I think it's 48 inch, 40 pound bond paper, Joey. If you go to the store, you'll be able to find it. I don't know what, uh, which bunch of, which group it's in. Uh, I don't know the uh, drawing supplies, maybe? drawing supplies. Yeah. So just, I think that's at the bottom. And I think there's 36 and 48 inch paper. So yeah, you could get, I believe so. you know, we use the 48 inch here just because we need it. If you can't find it, send me a message. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. Cause uh, he, he, that's the paper he uses and there's only one place to get it. So, and yeah. it's only like 26 or $27. It's so inexpensive. It's, you won't believe it. Yeah. You got to get, and it's 200 feet long. So think about that. Yeah. It'll last forever. I mean, we use it for all kinds of things. So I love it. And there was another question. Did I miss it? Um, okay. Magali, do you recommend one millimeter copper foil for tiny, tiny pieces? The one millimeter copper foil is all is, is the thickness of it. Magali, you want to keep the same thickness. What you do is you'll use a, uh, uh, if the glass is thinner, you can use a thinner foil as far as the the profile of it, which is going to be when you come down from 730 seconds, then you're into 3 sixteenths. And then below that is 530 seconds. So if you need a smaller foil in 730 seconds, Magali, go ahead and use the 3 sixteenths, but only if your glass is thinner. Uh, otherwise, you can use the 730 seconds and just take your exacto knife and cut the foil back and make the line you want. So, yeah. And um, so she would still use the 0.125, but only use the smaller size of the lead. Yeah. The, the thickness of your foil is, I thought foil was one point. Well, it is 1.25. I guess it is 1.125 millimeter. Right. Okay, and that's the thickness of the foil. Yeah. Otherwise, that 0.125 is a, a, a 125 thousandths of an inch. That's the thickness of the foil, and the width of the foil is what you need to change it's a little a change. bit. Or cut it back with the exact depth. Yeah, don't don't change the thickness of the foil because you have to have you have to have that. You have to have that that 125 thousandths of an inch of foil. But what you do want to do is maybe drop down to three sixteenths foil and then put it in a baggie, put it in your refrigerator because you're not going to use it all the time. But if you are using antique glass Magali or uh, some sort of a little bit thinner glass, I, I, yes, I would use a thinner foil as far as the profile, but not the thickness. Right. Okay. Karen's here. Hi, Karen. She's camping. She doesn't have a good cell reception, but we're glad you made it. Are you out in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyone have any more questions? Just put them in the chat. I know you guys have some questions out there. Um, I think I got all the soldering questions. Oh, my solder. Okay. So Ray helped Magali with her soldering iron. Yeah. So if you didn't see that about the soldering iron, please go back uh, I think I have it listed in the live stream. It's that in it a, is, it's a glass um, chat, right? It's in a glass chat, but I think I have it in the description of the live stream. If not, I can go back and list it 
I will list it. So when you're going through the live streams, you'll see that this is about the solder and iron tip. And it'll have Ray's, uh, all Ray's information, uh, really good stuff. Now, did you talk about the anti-seize? Well, we talked about using the, the milk of magnesia okay. on the screws and on, okay. your, on your set screw in your grinder or for your grinder head. You know, uh, of course, now they have the quick change grinder heads, but they only work on the new expensive uh, grinders, but they're really nice. So if you need a new grinder, whew, they got some nice ones out there now, y'all. Yep, that's right. Okay. Am I missing any questions or uh, does anyone need to ask us anything? Ask Ed a question or do you want to talk about something? Just let us know. Um, oh, Karen said she wishes she was in the parking lot. So. <laughs> okay. Well, this has been great, y'all. We really appreciate y'all taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us on uh yeah, because it's not just us. It's you. You guys have a busy schedule, too. And thank you for tuning in and sharing all of your stained glass questions. And we want to thank everybody that's new to the channel tonight that ch that chimed in. Okay. It's great to see everybody. And we got a. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you Thank so you, much. Ellen. We appreciate that very much. That is sweet. That's awesome. Y'all got the light going tonight. The sailboat is sailing off into the sunset. We appreciate that. We that really makes, do. That makes us very happy and we will. Uh, we thank you very much. Yeah, we really do. So, yeah. So don't forget, if you need to make a mold, cast a light is a great mold uh, product and it is available at glasscolor.com or um, <laughs> it's called Olympic Color Rods. Olympic Color Rod in Seattle carries the Castellite mold mix and like I said you can you can buy it in 25 pound bags and uh, so Barb and I are looking into getting it uh, sent here in bulk, and then we can sell it in five pound lots, which is basically a five pound lot is an eight by eight, eight, eight inch by eight inch square box full of castellite. And you can do a lot with that castellite. You can Man. make molds so that you can melt oh, and I glass. I what? Forgot to you tell forgot them. to tell them about the, the yeah, lead thing? Yeah, I forgot Where to tell Where are they? Where I, is it? They're in the. Okay, office. well, you save it for next week, okay? All right, don't let me forget okay. the lead thing next week, y'all. Okay, it's got something that... Uh, I want to share he, with you because you're going to need them. That he makes with the lead and uh, the casting. So, uh, yeah, you'll want to watch that next week. He's going to show that. Okay, I have a couple questions. Uh, everybody knows what rosettes are. Magali has... Um, need of a, a sandblasted piece and who would help her with that? You uh, Magali, uh, you know, before we got our own sandblaster here, I contacted my local uh, monument company and uh, talked with them and they were uh, in the beginning, they were very reasonable as far as their charge for um them doing the sandblasting for me. Yeah. So they have the sandblasting equipment, plus they have the, uh, you know, the technology to do all kinds of things. Yeah. So, so they you should get, be able to take If you that. get your mat ready, get it applied to the glass and you just need them to sandblast it. But you know, know what, what Magali, you can look on our, uh, you can look on our, uh, what the hell that is on our uh, website <gasps> and we do have a siphon fed sandblaster there uh -huh. and all you need is a bag of sand and a compressor uh-huh uh, so the siphon fed body shop too yeah body shop they have a bead blaster they'll blast it with you know aluminum oxide they'll blast it with pecan shells whatever 
Uh, so check that out and you can probably, you know, get them to help you out and, and maybe form an, a new uh, friendship and a relationship. So. Yeah. So that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. You never know who might be out there to help you. Thank you, Ray. Oh, she just needs a few uh, horseshoe sandblasted. Yeah, I'd take them to the body shop. Yeah, They'll be happy to do it. Body shop will do it for you, probably $10 or $15. Yeah, that troll's out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. And you know what, Magali? They may even let you just sandblast it, and that would be fun. <laughs> I'd say ship them to us, but that would cost you a fortune. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, spray with a clear coat. Oh, yeah, Ray you, put them in timeout and reported them. Okay. I might have blocked them, Ray. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Put them out. Zellius. Sounds like they're okay. hungry for a McDonald's. I don't know. They're hungry. Okay. They're hungry for a hard time. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. And we are, let's see, um, an hour and 12 minutes. And that's uh, good. And if you've got some, some more, more questions, time. we got plenty we've of time. we got time for uh, more questions. Chinese place doesn't close till 10. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, oh, yeah, Ray deleted all that. Okay, thank you, thank Ray. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. That's why we got you. You jumped right in there and got that guy. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, we are so happy that you all joined us this week. Thank you so and, uh, much. You, you just can't even, we can't even thank you enough, but we are. Thank you a lot. Thank you to Ray. Thank, thank you, you Ray. to, uh, I want to say one more thank you to Sunshine Glassworks for being our sponsor. And if you're heading up to Sunshine, please tell Scott and Barb and George and <laughs> Sean that Barb and Ed said hello. Let them know that you hear them on our channel. And just, you know, if you can patronize them a little bit with 1,500 colors of glass, they ought to have something that you're looking for. And, you know, just just remember, order online. You can order online. George will get it out. And I promise you, more than likely than not, it's getting here in one piece. And you don't have to worry about it because they, they know what they're doing at Sunshine. Well, thank you, guys. We're going to head out, and we'll see you next Monday. In the meantime, we'll see you on YouTube. Just keep watching the shorts, and we'll have some long videos for you coming out. May have a short tomorrow from my office because my grandson and I are heading to the church about two hours from here, and we're going to do some work. I'm going to grab him before he heads out to do a couple little fancy cuts for us or something. We'll see. We're doing something tomorrow, so <laughs> stay tuned. Okay. See you all later. Thank you all very much. Good night. We love Good night. you. We love you all. Thank you.